So what is a business? A business is many things to many people. In this particular training module, we're interested in what is a business, such as a McDonald's, to an owner, investor, franchisee. Pretty much anyone who has invested money in the business. And that's what a business is. It's an investment. Now, in return for investing money into the business, an investor expects money back, which is known as a return. They invest in the expectation of a return. There's two reasons an investor invests. They either invest for the value of whatever they're investing in going up, which is called capital gains, or they invest for a steady income which is known as cash flow. So they're two important words to remember. Capital gains and cash flow. The two reasons why an investor invests in a business. Now the question is, why would an investor invest in a business compared to any other form of investment? Now, let's take for example a car park. An investor could buy a car park and rent that out to private individuals, or they could invest in gold, buy a bunch of gold with their money. Now, in the gold example, they're expecting capital gains. They're expecting the value of the gold to go up due to the market, and therefore make gain on their capital, on their investment. Now, for the example of a car park, although the car park may actually rise in capital gains, what the investor is interested in is a regular paycheck, a cash flow, the rental from the car park. Now, the important thing is how does an investor decide to go for gold, car park or business? And the way they do this is through a thing called return on investment or ROI. ROI is simply a measurement of the returns compared to the original investment which is the only way to measure whether it's worth investing in business or any other form of business. Sorry, any other form of investment such as gold, car parks, residential, real estate, all those good things. So let's do an example. With the car park, let's say the car park cost us $50,000. So that is the investment. The initial investment is $50,000. Now Let's assume that we rent the car park for $300 per month times 12, that's $3,600. So a return investment is usually calculated on an annual basis. So this as a percentage is the return on investment, in which case this is approximately maybe 15 percent. So now to decide whether we were investing in a car park or a McDonald's we have to look at the ROI. And the reason why an investor invests in a business is because usually the ROI is far higher than such a figure. So let's go into more detail about how the four elements of a business interact. And one way we look at the financial health of a business is to look how the four elements, income, expenses, assets, and liabilities interact with each other. Generally in a business, Income and expenses are grouped as an income statement and the balance sheet captures the assets and liabilities. So how do these four all interact? Well firstly, income is revenue that flows into the business from the outside. And expenses is any money which leaves the business. So quite simply, you earn an income, you incur expenses. 
whatever is left over from income minus expenses is the cash flow. So that's the regular money which flows from the business to the investor. So an investor is very interested in the cash flow of a business. Now the other thing that an investor invests for, as we covered previously, is the value of the business rising, so the capital gain. To measure capital gain, we look at the balance sheet. So let's see how assets and liabilities interact with the income statement. Now, assets, for example, gold, or let's take, for example, simply money in the bank. Money in the bank earns interest. And interest is money that flows into income. So that's money that our assets earn us, and that flows into income. Now liabilities, on the other hand, for example, let's have a look at the company car. That takes money to maintain, it costs money for fuel, insurance, etc. So that's actually money which costs us. So our expenses increase. Its money flows out and into our liabilities. So assets are good, liabilities are bad when you're looking at this interaction. Now obviously when these interact with this, cash flow will be affected and they're all interrelated. But as I alluded to before, what an investor is also interested in is capital gains. So what is capital gains? Capital gains we must measure equity. What is equity? Equity is simply the value of your assets minus the value of your liabilities. And whatever is left is your equity. So for example, if you had $100,000 in the bank and you owned a car loan of 20 grand, then your equity would be 100,000 minus 20,000 which would be 80 grand of equity. Now an investor is interested in seeing equity go up. So if the value of my assets increase, so for example gold, if the value of the gold rises, then my equity rises, assuming my liabilities stay the same, and therefore I get capital gains. So that's how you can measure cash flow, and capital gains. And an investor will always look at these things before they invest in a particular business. Now let's talk about control and creativity. For an investor, there are different types of investments which may be m more appealing than others. For example, if an investor was investing in gold, There's not much you can do with the gold. He buys the gold, it sits somewhere in a bank, and according to the market, it either rises or lowers in value. So that's a, definitely a lack of control there. There's not much you can do to really improve the capital gains on that gold. It's up to the market. And that's exactly the same with any kind of paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. They're pretty much dependent on the market. There's not much you can do to control. You don't have personal control. Someone has control, just not you as an investor. Now the other side of the coin is when you don't have that control, you don't have creativity. When you're simply holding things like a mutual fund, you hold, you're invested in a mutual fund, there's not much you can do to be creative that's not illegal. So this comes to the point why an investor is interested in business. Business, what business gives you, and this also applies to real estate, but we're going to focus on business here. Business gives you the opportunity for control. So you control the business and therefore you can become creative. Now, let's take for example an investor who looks at a business, and may buy a business that's not doing well, but he has the control to become creative. So for example, he may come in and 
sell the company cars or get cheaper cars, uh, consolidate. Therefore, he's lowering his liabilities. And of course, that means there's less expenses, so the cash flow increases. So that's one element that an investor could control. Now, in terms of assets, same thing. The investor may choose to, uh, let's keep it simple, put his money in a bank account which provides more interest. So in that way, you increase the cash flow coming from your assets, which then increases the overall business cash flow, assuming nothing else changes. So that's another element that an investor can control and become creative with. Similarly with expenses. Expenses, you could, for example, rent cheaper offices. That will lower your expenses. You could fire some staff, also lower your expenses. And of course, lowering your expenses means your cash flow increases. Now the problem with all of this is that for an existing business, there's only so much you can do in terms of what we call operational efficiency. You, know, you can only reduce your expenses so much without affecting the delivery. I mean, if, for example, if you sold all the cars, all the business, perhaps those cars are critical for delivery of product. And therefore, you lose customers, your income goes down. So, there is, although you can be creative and have control here, what you're more interested in is income. Rising income, or raising the income in a business, improves the cash flow. It means you have more money to buy more creative assets, which improves the capital gains. So, income is critical and it's where you can apply the most creativity and control. Now, where does that income come from? Now, let me just reiterate that. Once a business is operationally efficient, there's, there's not that much creativity and control that comes through here. I mean, you could buy more assets, sure, but it's gonna cost you money. You can reduce your liabilities, okay. However, it may impact you operationally, which then loses customers, lowers your income. So really, the way to grow is by increasing income. And what's the primary way to raise income of a business? That's sales and marketing. So a business wants to increase the income flowing in. So what can they do? Generally speaking, they will hire a salesperson who can find business from two different places. They can go to their existing customers, and in a B2B context, this is known as accounts. And they can find extra sources of revenue from those existing accounts. They may sell them extra products, new services, anything from the business to those accounts. And these accounts are known. So there's a relationship already established between the business and these accounts and the salesperson taps into that relationship to extract more money. The problem with that is there's only so much money that comes at a certain period of time from accounts. The other way to increase the flow of income to the business is to find new business. That's where the salesperson actively goes out into the marketplace and gets new deals. And this is also how salespeople are divided. There's account managers who are responsible for extracting revenue from existing accounts, which can be substantial. And there's business development managers who find new business out in the market and bring it up to the business. Or there's salespeople who do a combination of both of those roles.